Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So, after an exhaustive week of testing of all the new AMD products out there, got a pretty good idea of how these all perform. Now, I went ahead and actually checked out Tech Power Up yesterday, and they finally got to doing their review on the Ryzen 5 3600. And one of the data points that they have in there, I think would be really, really beneficial to all of you guys out there. Even amongst other creators, testing CPUs, especially in the gaming realm, is a bit contentious, but I think that this data point that they have is actually a great way to pretty much summarize how much performance difference you're really going to get from something like a $200 Ryzen 3600 in comparison to a $500 uh, 9900K, like worst case scenario. So let's go ahead and check that out here today. Okay, so before we get into the gaming numbers, I did want to point this out because a lot of people were kind of wondering why somebody would buy a 3600X over a 3600. While I don't recommend it for most people, there is a difference in frequency. So on their 3600, the maximum overclock TPU could get was 3.125 gigahertz on all core for their 3600. However, leaving things at stock, they were able to get 4.2 gigahertz on all cores, regardless of workload. On the 3600X, you will go up to, I've actually gotten mine up to 4.4 in single thread performance, so it really depends on your chip and your cooler, um, but it will stay above 3, 4.3 for most of the time, and then it'll dip on down once you get to heavier workloads. Throughout gaming workloads, I noticed my 3600X was typically between 4.2 and 4.3. So is it worth an extra 100 megahertz for about 50 bucks? No. But if you do very single thread heavy things like emulation, that 200 megahertz difference, that might make enough of a difference for it to be worth it to you. That's very specific use case scenarios there. All right, so these are the numbers that I wanted to bring up. The 720p gaming test. Now, this is the contentious part, even amongst other creators. But this is going to put the absolute maximum workload on the CPU and the other parts of the system, eliminating the GPU as much as possible. They used an RTX 2080 Ti at 720p. So this is literally showing you worst case scenario against other competition. Scrolling on down, we can see the Ryzen 3600. They're using that as a baseline 100. And we can see, worst case scenario, the i9-9900K is 16% faster. This is under an extremely unrealistic workload of a RTX 2080 Ti at 720p. This is very impressive considering this is $199. These are about $450 to $500 at this time. Maybe they'll go down, but who knows? We're talking about more than twice the price, and in gaming, you're only gaining 16% higher performance. So if you think spending 50 bucks for only 2 or 3% isn't worth it, I don't think spending 2 to 2.5 times as much money is really going to be worth it for 16%. Now, just a quick run-through. They used a pretty diverse bit of games here. We have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Battlefield 5, Civilization 6, Far Cry 5, Metro Exodus, Rage 2... Uh, Sekiro, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and then this is really the only kind of odd game. This is a much older title, but, you know, it's okay to throw in one oldie. And they use The Witcher 3 and then Wolfenstein 2. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is, to me, this is a pretty good summary of the overall expected performance difference. So for everybody out there, it's like, well, Intel's still faster for gaming. Marginally. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit faster, but is it worth the money? And is it worth not having an upgrade path? That's really what it comes down to. Right now, the Ryzen 3600 is the new i5-2500K. I made that prediction in this video a while ago. Now we have all the data. And I can say for sure that this CPU is going to last at least five, maybe even ten years down the road. Now, how can I say that? Well, we already have a pretty good idea of what the next generation consoles are going to be. We know they're going to be Zen 2 based, at least the PS4. I don't think Xbox confirmed theirs, but it's going to be Zen 2 based, which we now have on desktop, and it's going to be 8 core, 16 thread. Now, we don't know clock speeds for sure, but the rumor mill's throwing it between 3 and 3.2 gigahertz. Okay, so if you look at something like the Ryzen 3600, that's coming in at 4 to 4.2 gigahertz. So it's about a gigahertz faster. Now, while the new consoles will have 33% more cores, this CPU has 33% higher frequency. 
So overall, worst case scenario, they're going to be tied, but more than likely, the Ryzen 3600 will still be more powerful. Now, how can I say that? Even in heavily multi-threaded games, no matter how optimized there are, going with higher thread counts, you'll always have diminishing returns. So for example, a single core 40 gigahertz CPU compared to a 10 core 4 gigahertz CPU technically has the exact same amount of cycles if it's the same architecture. Now there are other limitations, but we're pretending in this fictitious world that they're, they have the same latencies and everything else is equal. So in this scenario, a lot of people would think that the single core CPU would be slower at heavily multitask things. It's not really the case because it has a lot more cycles, it can actually do the same work as the 10 core. And realistically, because multi-threaded applications, like I said, they're not one-to-one, -one. they don't scale 100%. There's always a little bit of a loss whenever you add an extra core on there. So that 10 core CPU will be slower than the one, the single core 40 gigahertz CPU. It's always better to have less cores at higher frequency versus more cores at lower frequency. And there's no way that's ever going to change. It's just like SLI. No matter how good the scaling is, it's never going to be 100% perfect unless there is something else going on out there. There's always a little bit of a loss. So that's the reason why I can confidently say that this CPU with its 33% higher clocks can easily make up for the console's 33% higher cores. Now, if you do a lot of background tasks and things like that, if you're a big multitasker, yes, you're obviously gonna need more cores. But for the most part, if you're just going to be using your computer for browsing the internet, doing some light workloads like Microsoft Office, some research, and then occasionally playing a game, you don't really need to worry about it. Something like the 3600 is probably gonna last you through the next generation of consoles, assuming that the CPU comes in around that three gigahertz mark. They can surprise all of us and come out with a four gigahertz CPU, in which case you will then need a higher class CPU. But with the AM4 platform, you could easily upgrade at any time. So that's really awesome. Uh, games that are gonna be utilizing those next gen consoles aren't really gonna be developed until about 2022. So literally worst case scenario, you'll have about two or three years with this being perfectly fine. And if you need to upgrade, you're looking two or three years down the road but I'm confident that this CPU will last throughout the next generation, and I'm calling it, this is going to be the next i5 2500K, which is still technically usable today. Now the 2500K may not have the best 0.1% low performance here in 2019, but it can keep up with performance from the PS4 and the Xbox One, Xbox One X, absolutely no problem. So whatever games those can run, the 2500K could run greater than or equal to, typically with double the average frame rate. So to me, it's amazing. We now have basically no reason, if you're a gamer, you have no reason to spend more than 199 on a CPU. You really don't. Unless you need other features to do other things, you don't need to. And even better, if you're on a really tight budget, you can go with something like a Ryzen 5 1600 now for between $80 and $100. And then later on, if you need to upgrade, you can. So you can get into the platform and get started here today for very, very reasonable prices. Also, I'm hearing rumblings that memory prices should be increasing here soon. So if you are going to be building a new platform here anytime soon, don't wait for Black Friday. Don't wait, buy the RAM today or start building the platform now, but at least get your memory today. If prices are expected to go up due to complications out there between, looks like China and South Korea, they're having you know, disputes, and this could affect the market. And this is something that it's not like price fixing. It's not like something that anybody could just say, oh, it's automatically fixed. This would be due to a supply and demand issue. So I recommend getting your memory today. If you are planning on buying any of these platforms, just stock up on uh, DDR4, and then you can get the rest of the stuff later on. Well, already guys, those are my thoughts. I'm really excited. We don't really need to worry about CPUs for gaming anymore. Like I said, that chart right there is really, really excellent. You can basically see that the performance difference is so negligible, it's irrelevant. Now, there is a performance difference. So for those people out there like, oh, well, I need the absolute best. Well, okay. But for the average gamer out there, $199, that's all you really need to worry about. You're gonna be good for a long, long time. And like I said, if you do need more performance, you can always upgrade then for a much, much lower price than it would cost here today. So 
I'm really excited. We don't need to worry about CPUs anymore for gaming. Just pick AMD, Intel, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Just get whatever's going to do what you needed to do at the lowest price. That's my opinion. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. If you want to help support me out on Patreon, I greatly appreciate that and look forward to talking to you guys in Discord. That's all I have for today, and I will catch you guys in the next video.